I'll open the meeting. Um, we have public input. If there is anyone at this time that would like to. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to student report. We have um, Michael Tyrell today, who is <coughs> graduating. Fortunate for him, unfortunate for us um, to present to the school. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'll start this by saying, while well, spring is normally a real harbinger of growth and bounty among the students, at least the underclassmen, it really begins the long march to the conclusion of the year. Uh, but us seniors, on the other hand, are really strapped in for what is about a month more of schooling in North Reading. And I think for many of us, it's really just beginning to set in that all we have left here is a month. And uh, before I begin my report, I just wanted to take a minute to thank the school committee, both past and present members, and North Reading Public School District um, personally for the, my last 12 years here. Uh, in my time, you know, I've been to two brand new schools, uh, the LD Batchelder and the new middle high school. Uh, but no matter the outward and inward appearance of the schools, yeah. I feel I've had an, an excellent um, education and academic experience that's really helped me further in so many areas, um, from a dedicated athletic organization, a vibrant club scene, to stellar academics across the board. And sure, there's always room for improvement, but on the whole, although my last four years have really whizzed by, like light speed in Star Wars, I feel like the stars are just flying by, and apologize for that really nerdy reference, but uh, my time has really been truly amazing, and I have this body and our dedicated district staff to thank for that. So I just want to say thank you to begin. <clears throat> also, in accordance with this paradox of uh, spring decline, the final academic processes have really begun to kick in. So we've just entered fourth quarter, uh, and AP classes are concluding uh, their curricular just in, times for, uh, just in time for mid-May exams. Uh, most seniors are also aware of all the colleges they've been admitted into um, and are making final choices, and they too are beginning uh, to finalize scholarship applications. Juniors, on the other hand, are really beginning to take, the, take standardized testing and employ the really limitless resources of the guidance department to prepare their college searches. Uh, the resources are endless because the choices, the opportunities, and honestly the stress of the process is also endless. But if this year's senior class is any evidence, I think the juniors will be just fine. As someone who waited till even August to think about college and then spent the next uh, two months in a near constant state of panic, I, I will say that while terrifying the guidance department and the effort of our tremendous students always prevails. Uh, speaking from personal knowledge, we have student acceptances into Johns Hopkins University, Northeastern University, Boston College, Boston University, Bentley, McGill, Tufts, American University, King's College in London, Villanova University, Middlebury College, and a number of other first-rate institutions, including a cadre of almost 12 students likely heading to the University of South Carolina next year, which surprised me because we've never okay, really had a lot of Southern, wow. Southern <laughs> school popularity, but there's 10, nearly 10 students all likely heading to uh, USC next year. We also even have wait lists at schools such as Harvard, uh, Northwestern, Vanderbilt, Georgetown, Notre Dame, and so many uh, great schools. Um, and I know you are all wondering where, where my future plans are since I'm just amazing. And for those of you who couldn't tell by the tone, that's a joke, partly. Um, but because of a far too kind recommendation from our superintendent, Mr. Bernard, uh, I'll be heading to Cornell next year. Very good. Congratulations. Awesome. Athletically, uh, the spring season is just getting underway. As always, I expect our teams to have deep runs, be it uh, winter, fall, or spring. They always do extremely well. Uh, as a boys tennis captain, I can say that this year, and although I've said this every year, um, they'll make a deep run into the playoffs. Um, I've heard the bemoaning of the baseball players about their late practices. They're already being dedicated. They're already dedicated and getting ready to take on the season. And track is having what looks like a successful meet. I think they're still in the middle of it right now as I drove up. They're very cold, though. Very cold, yeah. Tough first day for a meet. Sure. Um, or one of the early meets. Yeah. And during the spring, there were also so many other extracurricular events going on. Uh, and it's hard to keep track of them all sometimes. Last Friday was uh, junior prom, and the day after was parent university. I'm sure Mr. Bernard uh, has something to say about this always superb event. Uh, but as one of the presenters again this year, <coughs> I can say that unlike last year, I enjoyed not having prom the night before. I was able to give a great presentation. Um, this week, students will leave on uh, this year's trip to Hungary, Slovenia, Croatia, and Germany, a part of uh, the world steeped in history, spectacular views, and rapid change. Um, I saw them having a meeting as I was walking in, so that's really um, another trip. And these are always great. I hear great positive things about be it China, um, you know, West uh, Europe, or anywhere else in the world they had. They always uh, are very successful. 
um, and this year they got an impromptu, you know, unexpected stop in Germany as an addition, um, oh. <clears throat> which is pretty That's nice. Cool. Yeah. Nice. All Town Chorus also performed last Thursday. That's where, as I'm sure you know, the elementary schools, uh, middle and high school, all come together to perform in a concert. And All Town Band will be performing uh, this Wednesday. Also last Friday, uh, Christopher McCann, uh, who's a senior student and I, we both attended Student Government Day um, with high school social studies department head, uh, Mr. Osting, where we served as state elective representatives uh, debating two real bills in the actual State House chamber. Uh, in Boston, so that was an excellent experience. And um, I'll pass around as my student's work, student work sample, the two bills that we got to debate. Um, one is about banning children in grade seven or under from playing organized tackle football, and the other is on banning the sale of flavored tobacco products. I'll let you know that both failed in our mock uh, debate, but they're really interesting bills. These are real bills being debated, and the football one was actually co-sponsored by our own representative, Bradley H. Jones, uh, Jr. I'm drawing emphasis to this event really because it shows the unique opportunities you know, afforded to our students because of our robust civics education. And again, thanks to you know, school committee's focus on this really important real life educative issues for senior students and students in all grades. So I'll pass those around. I just wanted to say thank you again. Uh, it's been a great four, it's been a great 12 years uh, as a student in North Reading, in North Reading Public Schools. Well, thank you. Um very much for always being so articulate and on point with everything that you are, you know, broadcasting or talking about. Um, and congratulations again on Cornell. That was wonderful. Um, and I just, I had mentioned earlier before uh, the air that um, where he was doing his presentation on um, Saturday, he rescued one of the other presentations, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Don't give me too credit. <laughs> too much credit. Uh, I would just like to say congratulations as well. Yeah. I'm from upstate New York, so enjoy that winter up there. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Not too uh, much different. It's, 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 yeah, it's a little different because there's nothing else <laughs> out there. <laughs> but, um, no, it, 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 and you've done so much. I mean, you, you thank us, but really our job is to provide the opportunities, and really students get the education that they make out of it themselves. You know, and there are a lot of opportunities available. And one thing I've always liked about North Reading is so many people do take advantage of it. So many people play sports and do all the different activities. And like I go to pretty much anything I've been to at the school, I feel like you're around there somewhere. You've helped with, you know, you've helped with the app development. And so really compared to a lot of students, you have done so much for this school and you know, you've taken advantage of it to you know, better yourself. So I hope it serves you well in the future. So good luck. Well, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome. Oh. <clears throat> Adam Chairman, do you mind if I just offer a quick comment? Um, Michael mentioned that I, he asked me to write him a college uh, recommendation letter, which I was very happy to do, but the letter really wrote itself. Michael, as you said, Mr. Buck, <clears throat> Michael has been involved in so much um, and has really made uh, his mark here at the high school. You'll be missed, Michael. Oh, thank yeah, you. You're a good you boy. will, too. And, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bernard literally cannot go on without you. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> evidently, yeah. There, yeah. there are many times when I talk to Michael and I forget <laughs> I'm talking to a student. It's like I'm talking to a colleague, really, and it's, it's a testament to who you are. Your parents did a nice job. Well, thank you. Good for you. You're more than welcome to stay. <laughs> Um, I would love I, to stay know, for see, the, uh, the budget see hearing. That's how you have the senior slide going on, you know. Just gonna... And I'll spend my extra time reviewing the, the uh, your yeah, It's online, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. All right. We're going to uh, go slightly out of um, order on the agenda, and we'll put the continued business down with um, the policy. Yep. And we'll go straight into the public hearing. So... Um, if I could have a motion to um, open the public, the public budget hearing. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, I move to open the public hearing on fiscal year 2020 budget. And can I have a second? Second. All right. Um, all in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Great. Thank you. So I do have a presentation um, this evening. I have about a a 15 to 20 minute presentation that provides a, an overview of um, the FY20 budget. These are the main topics we're going to try to cover. We're going to start by looking at the major budget uh, cost drivers that were, were driving the, the recommended budget this evening. Um, we're going to go over the, the recommended new positions and talk a little bit about 
what's level services and what's what's modified or some of the additional positions that were part of our strategic plan. Uh, then we're going to get into the numbers a little bit and, and look at um, you know the, the, sort of a high level overview and a budget summary. Uh, we'll we'll talk about the current budget gap and budget deficit based on the current status of the revenue plan um, in the town and, and where we stand with that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the budget offsets and the other revenue sources that make everything kind of come together. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk um, about some of the conclusions of our recommended FY20 budget and then um, go, go into what, where we go from there and what the next steps are. So to start, uh, the FY20 budget had four major cost budget drivers. Um, contractual salary obligations um, are always a driver of the school budget. Salaries represent 82.7% of our total budget requests. And this really includes the, the modest cost of living adjustments and any other you know, eligible, um, you know, either whether it be a lane movement or a longevity increase for all of our eligible staff in our collective bargaining agreements. Um, and the contractual obligations really represent a little over you know, 2 percent of our recommended 4.3 percent budget increase. So it's certainly the, the probably the, the largest driver um, given that so uh, much of the pie is contributed to salaries about 82.7 percent. The next uh, driver is and has been for the number of years is our strategic plan known as NRPS 2021. Um, the fiscal 20 budget represents year four of this five-year strategic plan, and this has really been a working document that has guided the district and the administrative team and the school committee in looking at our enhancements and our new in initiatives and what either additional staffing positions we are trying to achieve to move the district forward. Um, and the FY20 budget is no different. There are 1.5 FTE positions totaling, totaling a little over $106,000 um, that we are looking to achieve in the FY20 budget request. Uh, these positions focus on the teaching and learning strategy area, and we'll hear more about these positions in greater detail a little bit later on in the presentation. Operational costs as the next uh, major cost, cost driver. Fixed costs, is, fixed costs that increases that have definitely have presented a challenge in fiscal 20, and that has been the case in previous fiscal years. The need to adjust mainly building maintenance line items to keep pace with actual expenditures in the following areas, uh, heating and cooling equipment and maintenance and repair needs, plumbing, uh, boiler uh, maintenance and repairs, landscaping needs across not only this campus but all, all four school campuses, uh, maintaining our wastewater treatment plant operations and facility, Main, uh, our, transporta our regular busting transportation contract, those rates are increase uh, each year, and that is also the case in fiscal 2020. Uh, utility rates for electricity, gas, and water are increasing slightly in fiscal 20. So these are all fixed costs, kind of operational needs that we've had to adjust the budget for. And I spoke um, at the March 18th preliminary budget presentation how Certainly, larger pieces of the pie have, have had to be reallocated over the last three or four years to account for, for the, uh, these areas and these bu building maintenance needs. Special education out of district costs is the last major cost driver. Um, funds needed to support anticipated out of district tuitions and transportation costs are expected to increase in fiscal 2020. The district anticipates um, a slight decrease in the number of students that will be uh, out of district, uh, that will require out of district placements in fiscal 20. Um, but you know, even despite the, the anticipated decrease of students, going from about 37 students currently in out of district placements to as low as 32 students, uh, we still feel uh, that this line item is an area that will need to increase in order to meet the needs of these students. Um, we continue to evaluate our special education programs and where appropriate we have reallocated current resources to provide additional student support service, in particular increased social and emotional support. These programs assist with reducing the potential need for outside placements and special education services where, when appropriate. So that's certainly uh, uh, the other big piece of um, the budget. Um, so this is this is makes up the 
the major cost categories. Not sure why those names aren't appearing, um, but I'll kind of walk you through them. So I referenced earlier that 82.7% uh, of the um, budget is, is salaries. That is pretty typical school stat when looking at uh, a school budget, uh, not only in North Reading, but a, a really across the Commonwealth. Um, special education costs make, make up the next largest piece of the pie. That is the red uh, piece of the pie that represents about 6.8%, which is slightly up from, from last year, but certainly a major cost driver, as I just spoke to, and a, a big part of the, the budget story in the development of the FY20 budget. Um, operations and maintenance um, is the next piece of the pie, which makes up about 5.9%. That's this brown area here. Um, with increased costs in these building maintenance areas that I spoke of in the last slide, um, in large part driven by the needs of this middle school, high school campus over the past you know, four to five years, uh, this has been a major cost you know, budget driver, and this area has increased over the past few years. Um, the next two pieces of the pie is our instructional expenses, which is the yellow, which is at 3.4%, and then our transportation costs, both special education and regular transportation, which is at 1.2%. Um, so these percentage breakdown overall have not changed in the last number of years. Um, and like I said, the largest piece is being those salaries at 82.7%. So now we want to talk a little bit about our FY20 uh, proposed new staffing positions. Um, the first two are uh, needs are driven by enrollment and shifts in enrollment in the full day kindergarten program. We would consider these top two, these first two items uh, as part of our level services budget. We need to, in order to offer each uh, family that desires full day kindergarten, um, the enrollment is up in full day kindergarten next year. We anticipated this already. We knew based on birth rates and census data that the full day kindergarten enrollment for fiscal year 2020 would most likely be, be up, and that is the case. So in order to provide full day kindergarten for all families desiring such, we've had to increase a full day kindergarten section, which comes with a kindergarten teacher and a kindergarten paraprofessional. Now you see the cost amounts reflected in the far right column. Uh, because we are also receiving additional tuition costs for the increased enrollment, um, although we need to sort of certainly budget and plan for these, these two positions, it is true that this part, part of this cost is, will be offset by the additional tuition revenue that we will receive from the increased enrollment. So this, this cost of those two new positions may not be, the salary cost may not be totally uh, reflected in the, in the general fund request. Um, the next two positions we would consider uh, certainly are driven by our NRPS 2021 strategic plan. Um, these are the 1.5 uh, FTE positions um, that are reflected in the teaching and learning strategy area of that strategic plan. Um, and it's an, the first one is an academic teacher, which would focus at the middle school, which would, is in the foreign language and STEM curricular areas. Um, this has been has long been uh, a item in the uh, strategic plan was efforts to expand our foreign language uh, and STEM uh, curricular areas. By introducing a two-part course to be taught in grades six and seven um, and in the foreign language area, we feel students would be able to um, take Spanish and French uh, much earlier in their, in their years at the middle school that would begin in sixth grade. And then by the end of seventh grade, the students would have completed a course equivalent to Spanish one and French one which would allow them to take Spanish two and French two in, in grade eight. So it would certainly accelerate their, their offerings and their access into foreign language much earlier and it would expand that program. Um, the 1.0 FTE academic teacher at the high school will increase the breadth of academic offerings and also help to reduce class sizes in both the science and digital learning and entrepreneurship departments. Um, additionally, uh, course expansion in the video technology and other emerging STEM program areas would also be achieved by the funding of this 1.0 academic teacher. The next two items we'd also would consider part of our recommended uh, modified level services budget and they are focusing on the areas of, of our operational needs. I spoke of a little bit earlier our, our main a priority of the budget is to maintain our campuses 
um, at all, really four, four campuses and all five schools. Um, having this Florida custodian um, would really, we envision this would be a split shift custodian that would work between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. This position would report to areas uh, in need. It would, there are certainly times when we don't have a full complement of staff, and this position would allow us to um, you know, maintain uh, efficiencies and still you know, meet the, the cleaning needs of all, all four campuses while reducing overtime costs. So, we'd have to, so as you can see, the salary that's reflected for this position is about half the, the true salary of a 1.0 custodian position, because we anticipate we would be able to save in overtime due to re less coverage needs when there are sick calls, et cetera, by funding this position. And that would also allow us to meet um, our goal to meet the you know, industry standards of square foot, square footage to our, our cleaners and allow us to maintain uh, you know, efficiency and meet our cleaning needs throughout the, the, the four campuses. This next operational need is the facilities engineer. Um, it does include some contractual savings on the expense side, uh, but this has been a big part of, uh, we talked about this last year, in the last couple of years it's been part of the, the budget conversations. This would allow the district to maximize efficiencies within the building and grounds department while enhancing the ability for the district to experience savings by reducing outside contractor work. And it was, we also envision it, we would be able to leverage opportunities to further reduce our energy consumption. Um, this building is certainly has, uh, certainly has some complicated systems that we feel by having this access to an engineer on staff, we'd be able to leverage our schedules and so forth and, and experience a level of savings in many of our outside contractor work with our energy management contract, with our heating and cooling contract, um, and there are a variety of areas that we would experience some savings. So we would anticipate conservatively about a $20,000 savings on the expense side of the equation by reducing some of that outside contractor work by funding this position. And the, the goal would be that that could grow over time as we continue to, to transition into, the, into having a facilities engineer kind of on staff. So these are the 5.5 FTE positions, um, totaling a little over $309,000 in our recommended budget. And as I referenced earlier, we do see the first two positions being mainly driven by, as part of our level services budget, to offer full day kindergarten to all families that are desiring full day kindergarten. And then the remaining 3.5 FTE positions really driven by our strategic plan to expand um, the academic curriculums, mainly at the secondary level, and then meet our operational needs. So in summary, um, how does our budget compare to FY19? Um, our FY20 budget request is a little over $32 million, um, a little over $1.3 million increase over FY19. That's our general fund request. That would be a 4.3% increase over FY2019. We also have our grants, our federal and straight grants, and our revolving counts that we take in revenue from many of our optional programs that makes up a little over $2.9 million. Um, so we anticipate due to increased full day kindergarten tuition and so forth that that revenue would be slightly up next year from FY19. So the total school funds is actually a little bit more than what our our recommended um, or our request is for the, the general fund appropriation. We're actually looking at slightly under $35 million in terms of total school funds at a little over you know, $34,988,820. But even that doesn't tell the full picture. Um, we receive a variety of donations um, at each school committee meeting. We accept donations from our uh, parent and support groups. Um, which total a little over $250,000 is sort of the annual average. These donations help fund technology initiatives, um, you know, many other uh, you know, enhancements to athletic programs and equipment um, you know, throughout the year. And then our parent uh, groups, our five main you know, PTO and parent organizations, also uh, provide some in-kind you know, gifts through their enrichment budgets and their school field trip budgets which total about $75,000. So all these items really uh, you know, play a role and play a factor into making the, the, the into funding the, the school budget and to making the, the, really the North Reading experience is what it is today um, you know, for the North Reading students. 
Looking at where we've been, what, what our request is for FY19 and our recommended request and how that compares to what has been funded, this is our, in terms of our general fund request. So we are asking for a 4.3% increase and that is slightly higher than a level services budget. That's why we're calling that modified level services. The main difference of those being that additional 3.5 you know, FTE positions, the, the 1.5 academic positions, and the 2.0 operational need positions, the custodian and the facilities engineer. Um, so that is slightly higher than what we've been funded over the last three years um, at 3.8%. And if you look at what the you know, average increase since um, really the last 12 years, it's been a, a little under 3.3%. Um, so our request for, for next year is slightly higher than that um, as, we, as we look to FY20. So I talked a little bit about the difference between level services and recommended and the, the, the budget that we presented this evening is the middle column, the recommended budget. Um, so level services still includes those additional kindergarten positions as well as all the adjustments we've had to make for our contractual obligations for salary, salary increases, known salary increases, those fixed cost increases driven by utility adjustments and those building maintenance areas that I spoke of earlier, and then the special education out of district needs. Uh, that would fund a budget at uh, about 3.7% increase, and that's been pretty typical. If I look back at our level services budget, we've typically needed anywhere between 35 and 4% to maintain level services given the, the salary obligations, special education, our district tuitions, and our fixed costs. So that's, that's pretty, pretty typical. We are requesting slightly more than that um, to refill the 1.5 FTE positions. That is a relatively modest request, request a little over $106,000, which would fund that 0.5 academic teacher at the middle school to expand foreign language and STEM, and the 1.0 academic teacher at the high school help control class sizes in those uh, core academic um, subjects and as well as expand offerings in the, the STEM, the science, technology, engineering, mathematics, curricular areas that I spoke of earlier would achieve a lot. You know, we, we would definitely achieve a lot through those requests. The other piece of that middle school request helps um, align the middle school schedule um, and that would be um, a significant um, you know, benefit to, the, to aligning that middle school schedule as well. Um, so significant um, advancements would be achieved through the difference of the recommended and the level services. And then operationally having access to that Florida custodian to bring down overtime costs, maintain efficiency of our cleaning needs throughout the four campuses. And that facilities engineer we think is an investment in long term, not only to protect this campus, um, that we've, uh, the state of the art campus, but to leverage our efficiencies, you know, maximize it energy consumption initiatives, um, look at LED lighting, all these types of initiatives we feel like having access to a, an engineer on staff would be very beneficial. So that, that's where we landed on the recommended budget. Now the full requested budget, there was about another six positions, a little bit under that, 5.9 positions uh, that I presented at the preliminary budget um, that's reflected in the budget book um, as well that's, that's been, been out there for uh, you know, several weeks. Um, that would fully fund our NRPS initiatives. They would, they would certainly bring a lot more academically, a lot more uh, positions in terms of um, expanding you know, technology enhancements and, and so forth that uh, are not reflected in our recommended budget. So we really, when we put the budget together at this stage, we're really trying to find the balance of what's gonna move the district forward um, and what the, 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 the key priorities are um, and balance what the community can afford. So, so that's really what our attempt is in, in, in these three, three budget proposals. Um, there was also a supplemental handout in each of your packets that kind of went through a lot more detail about the, the three different proposals. Um, so where do, we, where do we stand today in terms of what we've recommended and what the current revenue plan is um, and what the budget deficit or budget gap is currently. So as of last Wednesday, um, the finance planning team, that collaborative group, uh, chairs and vice chairs of the three major boards, town administrator, town finance director met, um, and we got the most updated revised version of the available funds for fiscal 20. 
And based on our recommended budget, that's that middle column, the $32 million, $083, $320, um, we are about a little over $401,000 difference between what the available fund revenue is right now. Um, I believe the level services gap is about 207000 So that, that's where we stand. Um, we've been here before. Um, you know, we, we, we're used to seeing budget gaps um, <coughs> as late as this stage uh, be, be somewhat similar to this in the prior years. And uh, we certainly work to uh, uh, you know, balance the budget and kind of put our heads together over the next few weeks before a budget vote would happen by this committee on April 29th. So when we look at our recommended budget, we want to explain what can we conclude and, and what do we achieve in the FY20 recommended budget. I think it's fair to say it's not a lot going on. It's not a terrible, you know, fancy budget. But at the same time, um, what, we, what we're achieving, what can we conclude? The budget allows us to meet our contractual obligations with employees and employee unions. So that's it. number one, we have to meet those, those obligations. Those are fixed cost increases. As I said earlier, before we do anything, that's about a 2.2% increase. Also, when we look at our NFPS 2021 initiatives, as well as our enrollment shifts, this year was happening in the areas of full day kindergarten. Um, we, it does include additional staffing to achieve um, educationally sound student teacher ratios, always a top priority in a main budget goal. Full day kindergarten for all families that are desiring such. It advances the academic program at the secondary level with an emphasis on expanding foreign language and STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics curricular areas. Been a huge part of our strategic plan for a number of years. It allows us to meet our operational needs at all five schools with a focus on maximizing cleaning, maintenance, and energy consumption efficiencies. And then it seeks to meet the needs of all students, in particular the district's high need student population. So I think these you know, three, three main bullets with some sub, sub bullets there on our, what our additional staffing would achieve would, within that 4.3%, uh, certainly accomplish a lot. So what are our next steps? Uh, we're going to have ongoing discussions with the finance planning team about available revenues. Um, as I just referenced on the prior side, prior slide, the present budget gap is a little over $401,000 of that recommended 4.3% budget, a little over $207,000 for the 3.7% level services. Um, the finance planning team will meet again on April 10th to discuss available revenues. That meeting will take place at 1.30 p.m. in the superintendent's conference room. We are set at some point we will present the budget to the finance committee um, once we um, start to um, you know, finalize this process as we approach the, the vote, the vote, the school committee vote, which is scheduled for April 29th. Um, the school committee's budget workshop will occur at, on April 24th prior to the vote at 3 p.m., again in the superintendent's conference room. Town meeting this year is scheduled for June 10th at 7 p.m., and we will continue to await state budget actions. Um, the House budget has yet to be released, so we actually we have the governor's budget and we know what he did with state aid. Um, the House budget is scheduled to be released about the middle of this month. Um, haven't heard too much from, from the House in terms of what they're going to do, but um, I always remain hopeful that they could boost up state aid, in particular Chapter 70 aid. That minimum amount that was funded per pupil, which every district would receive, was in the governor's budget was funded at $20 per pupil, which is a pretty low threshold. Um, we look back historically over the last three or four years, that's been as high as $30 has kind of been the average. And the House and the Senate sometimes raise that, that minimum amount. So wouldn't amount to a lot of money uh, for North Reading, but um, it could be something, something there. Um, the Special Education Circuit Breaker Program um, has been funded at about 70% in the governor's budget right now. Fully funding that program would be at 75%, so I haven't heard too much. Um, but we're always hopeful that the House and the Senate Ways and Means as it moves through the legislative process could allocate additional funding in that area, and that could fully fund that program at 75%, which would not mean a lot of new revenue uh, to the school district but could, and to the town, but it could mean some additional revenue there as well. So we're going to watch these closely over the next couple of weeks. And then we'll continue to discuss the budget this evening. 
um, as well as at the budget workshop on April 24th and again as we approach the April 29th budget vote. So that was really the presentation this evening. Um, at that, that being said, I'll kind of open, open it up to uh, any, any questions. You did get our raise in there, right? I did, yeah. Okay, just, you know, that's, that's the important thing. There. Right. <laughs> so. Wait, what? <laughs> so. I think it's fair to say that, you know, there's certainly some work to do um, over the next few weeks, but, you know, we're, we do remain hopeful. Thank you, Michael. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, I'm opening it up for questions. If anyone wants to take the lead, I do have a couple, but go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm still trying to find where my notes are. Well, just since Mel's not here, I figure I should just talk for a little bit. So, <laughs> um, I mean, Michael, thank you, first of all. I know there's been a lot of work done on this. Um, the, the only comments I would just make is just to kind of point out a few additional things. For example, last year we really fought to get the special education team chairperson and we're starting to see already that the out of district, the number of students going out of district is going down. However, the budget is still more than $300,000 more. Mm -hmm. And it's actually significant that when you look at, you know, we have a $400,000 budget gap for what we ideally would like and we're $300,000 more. We were able to get extraordinary relief last year because our, the increase was so much over last year, but then we have to deal with it this year. Now, it went up again so much this year that we're still apply, we're applying for extraordinary relief again, but it's just ridiculous. I mean, when you look at the funding sources and 13% of our budget comes from state aid and special education is 22% of our budget. And it's just, it's just out of whack and it's just, I don't know what the solution is, but mm -hmm. I mean, we're dealing with it. Um, the only other thing I would just say is for the middle school, because obviously you guys are looking at it from an educational standpoint and I am too, but also I think from efficiency standpoints, that's one reason I was arguing so much for the special education team chairperson last year, but at the middle school right now, we have two different schedules. The sixth grade has a different schedule than seventh and eighth. By funding the position to try to get the middle school and not only are we adding foreign language at an earlier age and expanding the offerings, we're also going to see efficiencies in shared staff because now they'll be on the same schedule. Because in the past, you know, if a student's in the sixth grade, they can't go to the next seventh grade class because it started ten minutes before the next period starts. Right. So, yes, I missed that. Like, yeah, it just it just seems like something that I, I don't know why we set up. I'm, I'm sure there was great reasons for it, and I've heard that it was kind of like a transition year, the sixth grade. But it, I mean, for for sharing staff and parale uh, paralegal yeah. paraprofessionals, um, I, I just think that's another advantage of trying to get in the same schedule. Yep, thank you, that's a good point. No, it's a, it's a, it's a significant byproduct of yep. the proposal we have is that the alignment of the schedules does allow us to share staff. You can't right now because if you have a paraprofessional going to a grade six class, the time for that class is different than say a grade seven or eight class, so they can't, they can't dovetail each other. It makes sense, yeah. But mm -hmm. the, 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 the truth of the matter is we're, we're approaching it more for the academic gain, but that is a significant byproduct of the move if it were to happen. Um, would you like to explain why the schedule was the way it was? Maybe for people who didn't know that the sixth grade schedule was different than the seventh and eighth? Yeah, I think, I think there were two factors. I think it, it's, and it's, and it's been quite a while, so even before I was superintendent, but the, the time when um, <clears throat> the middle school moved to eliminate study periods and get more academic time. And also, there was consideration for the transition year to kind of ease students into, into the middle school year. But I think the philosophy now is that having had a number of years, you know, double digit number of years of experience with the sixth grade working with seventh and eighth graders, the administration believes that the, sixth, the transition year is not, is not necessary any longer. And I should add too, because it looks, it looks, and, the, and we'll talk. I think you know, I'd like to present this more in more detail at the at the workshop on the 24th to you all. Um, but I think when you look at it at first glance, it's how does the how does the 0.5 teacher gain see, appear to gain so much for the middle school? <clears throat> and it's a fair question. It, it actually is one piece. And Michael, please, if I misstate something or if you want to add to it, but please. it's it's a it's it's almost like a it's one of three puzzle pieces that have to come together in order to, to make the whole model work. And the other two pieces of the puzzle are, are 
the addition of the um, the high school academic teacher, which that that would appear to look um, that would appear to be something that is a hybrid digital learning specialist and classroom teacher. So that person would likely pick up some high school academic classes, but would then have the flexibility to be able to service the middle school too. And that's why we kind of have it as a K-12 position yeah, off, off to the yes. side. The other, the other piece, the third piece of the puzzle is um, we had a digital learning specialist leave mid-year this year, and we'd like to retool that position to be similar to the one I just described. Yes, so that the, those three coming together would allow the digital learning model with non-teaching assignments to be successful, but also then have the flexibility to have those people teach classes in the STEM area at the middle school. So that, by aligning the schedules, the what, what's when foreign language isn't being offered, we could expand the robotics program to the middle schoolers, and therefore, that's why we kind of have it on the slide as like a foreign language slash, slash STEM program. It's not, it's not hiring a .5 teacher that would teach .25 foreign language and .25 technology, it's just, that's, it's more for an internal Correct. role for us, but that's the best way we can capture it on the, on the slide. Right. It's a little bit, it's a little bit complicated. And, and I think we're so, um, I think we're so, uh, what's the right word, excited about the possibilities is we think academically it's a significant gain that we can achieve for just over $100,000. It seems, we, we feel like we're getting a lot yeah, we are. academically staffing by being able to share staff for, you know, it's a lot of money. I don't mean to make it sound like a six-figure dollar amount is not significant, but for what we can gain, it seems like the investment is really, you know, a, a, a prudent move on our part, so. I appreciate that, because John, I think I mentioned that that was one of my questions. Yeah, like, you did. Point 0.5. Yeah, it, it, it's, 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 language it's kind of a hairy thing yeah. to explain, yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that gives you, and we, we yeah. actually, I actually have a handout for you mm -hmm. that Patrick Daly and I and um, Mr. Maloney and Dr. O'Connell, the two middle school administrators, have, have put together yeah. that, that will, you know, it'll be a, it, it's a nice visual, I think, for you. We, mm -hmm. we, we, it shows what a schedule looks like now, 6th, 7th, and 8th, and what a schedule would look like 6th, 7th, and 8th if the proposal were into us. So I, I'm hoping that beyond what I shared with you just now, there'll be some more clarity when you see it on paper. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, have, I have one question, but, um, it, and I don't know if it's for here or not, but usually at this meeting we have kindergarten parents here um, concerned about that. I mean, do, do you have an update in kindergarten? I mean, every, everyone's going to be offered full day. Are, are most, most or all at the schools where they were expecting to go to? Or I would, know? Yes, I would say the first part a little bit differently. So okay. we, I think for, well, certainly since I've been the superintendent, but not for each year, I think we, we, the committee made the commitment, and I think we've adhered to that, that any family that wants full day kindergarten would have a spot. It may not necessarily be in their, um, in their home district. Home school, I guess is probably a better way to say it. Um, right now, we do have a very small number of people on a waiting list as to whether or not they will get the spot in their, in their home district school. But the, the spot is available to every family that wants it. And it's up a lot. I mean, we're, yeah. and actually, yeah. half day kindergarten is down. It's, it's, like, down. it's very small. Most yeah. people want the full day. Um, but yes, we're, we're committed to that. And I'm, I'm hopeful that more people will come off the waiting list and be accommodated in their in their home, but we just we just don't know that right now because we we haven't factored in any potential retentions yet. Those are things that have to kind of play up, play themselves out a little bit longer. But um, I, it's it's fair it's very fair to say that anybody who wants full day kindergarten will have a spot, and it's a sm it's a relatively small number on the wait list. And will you be able to show sort of the if this position was added, what that? Um, number of students per teacher ratio would look like? The, the kin in the kindergarten program? Yeah, yeah, we would have a, we have we a, have that, we have yeah. a breakdown okay. of, of yeah. what the um, class sizes are yeah. at each school for each program. Right. Yes. Small still. Mm -hmm. We actually have yeah. that as kind of a working document yeah. now that we use with the right. administrative council when we meet with them. Because we, believe it or not, we, I think we talk about kindergarten at almost every administrative do, yeah. council number yeah. at this time of year, going yeah. back even a yeah. few months. It's, it's and, it, and they, the numbers do, they change would, a little bit not not right. much but you know it's one or two here or there but yeah. it can make a difference yeah. the guideline certainly is always between like 18 and 22 yeah for a class and size I say right now yeah. based on the numbers they would be between 17 and and 22 okay um, across the district um, okay. and i don't i don't want to foreclose don i mean maybe you're here to come talk about kindergarten as well but <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't show don 
<laughs> Doesn't show. <laughs> Did you have any yeah, that's a, I think that's a you know we, that's a commitment that I think is an important one. Yeah, you know that yeah. that full day kindergarten program is, yeah. yeah. That, but that's why I think we work so hard to try to make we sure try, we, yeah, it's, we can accommodate it's, it's, because we see the the, the academic idea. value of it. So. And, and just to clarify, the uh, the um, the tuition is reflected in the revenue, the extra. Correct. Revenue. Right. Yeah. So yeah. The, the offset's already there. Right. So the, the tuition is reflected in the revenue. Correct. Regarding the. Um, facilities engineer position. I know you uh, did a little bit of a conservative uh, estimate of some savings. Yeah. Can you give an example of the kind of thing that you're talking about? I am, yeah. So, for instance, we think having access to that facility engineer in staff, in house. Currently, we have an HVAC heating and cooling outside contract or preventative maintenance contract yep. that they come in quarterly and, and, and do the visits and check the filters and the belts and so forth, and then they're kind of an on call re repair need. So that's a pretty sizable contract at this, in this building, and we feel yep. we could reduce those number of visits um, and bring that, that contract down um, by having the expertise kind of in-house in, in, in staff, and we feel like that right there at minimum was about $10,000 savings in year one in that area. We also have an energy management contract that we pay in a consultant to come in monthly look at our occupancy schedules, look at our heating and cooling system, um, <clears throat> try to fine tune some set points and uh, try to maximize our efficiencies and our energy consumption. Uh, that's a, a monthly visit. We feel like we could bring that down and for instance, make that a, a bi-monthly visit. And that would be a, initially a, a, about a $5,000 savings there. Right. Uh, we also have a, a lighting uh, control, preventative maintenance, contract for about five thousand um, dollars company comes right now only coming about twice a year helps us look at our lighting controls they're, they're complicated it helps us you know troubleshoot some issues that we kind of might keep a list on and on the, and add up when they when they come out and visit us and we feel like we could eliminate that almost that contract entirely so conservatively right there that's twenty thousand dollars and that's and the number you use that's the number we use yeah. and we looked at those three areas um, conservatively in that first year that we felt we could reduce by having that $85,000 position. Um, Do you mind if I add something? Yeah, to that? please. And I think you spoke about it when you did the presentation briefly, Mike, but I think we, we think that there is there are things that a, a person on staff would discover for us that we don't even know about right now, too. Don't you agree, Correct. Michael? Like yes. that we think that somebody that's here with that expertise would say, but if you did it this way, you might you know, fill in right. the blank. Mm -hmm. I think it's Some also sort of an fear energy that. savings or yeah. I think it's it's also a point that you know, we want to focus efforts on energy consumption. And right now certainly yeah. LED lighting is big. And we know there's savings out there. Um, we had a plan in front of the you know capital improvements planning committee um, that was kind of starting small, but we, we know there's some savings that can be achieved through looking at energy consumption measures. But um, you know it's hard to kind of find the you know the um, the bandwidth or so forth for the current staffing to kind of research those initiatives and, and bring something back and, and really bring it to fruition or take it to the next level. So we, I do feel having an engineer to kind of work on those projects, spearhead those projects, go out, look at things like LED lighting, look at solar, look, you know, look at energy consumption measures that we could take. Um, there could be some savings that could be achieved long term. And, and if I could, I, was, I would add too to I was told by the contractor on the project that the, the the sophistication of the systems here are now things that they're bringing forward in other projects, and that they they are going so far. The, the the contractor itself, the company Gilbane, is going so far as to say that before they turn schools over to communities in the future, they are going to require that they fund the position of an engineer to have on staff because they see so I, I, I'm telling you that because I think it's not just something that we're seeing because you know we don't have the the expertise in house I mean it's it's that level of sophistication is very very high and, and this position you expect to impact the whole all the buildings in the district. Yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. The focus, the major focus focus here. here especially initially I the high yes. technical systems here but they, yeah Probably take all, a while all, just to get their handle just to get their, their mind wrapped around what we right. have but that, the, that the, the, the end result would be that, yes, they could, they could help us with the elementary schools. And we just missed that whole LED thing. Yes. Right. About a year. Yeah. Just by about a year. Yeah. That's all. So, yeah. so we're, start, you know, we're starting to, to do it as things you know, die out here. But 
you know, we feel like there's definitely a, an opportunity there. Yep. You know, we have eight, we have eight exterior lights that are out right now, and we usually wait until there's about that number because we have to bring the lift in. I think right. I explained so, that to you before, yep. and that's yep. actually been that's in the works. Um, but we've done this. I think this will be the third time now that we'll have them out to do the work. We we are replace we we have been and we will continue to replace those with LEDs so yep. that you know down the road eventually yeah. that that will be a, a benefit. Um, Michael, I just had a quick question. It's more of a could you just you know uh, remind us uh, on the operational need for the floating custodial um, yes. person? Um, how many do we have? And kind of like what's not the, the state's recommendation, but the norm of the norm. Yes, so we are. Um, we have 18 custodians, um, so 18 really cleaners, custo you know, custodial on staff currently. The the recommendation is that you're one cleaner to every like about 30 to 32,000 square feet. So we're slightly above that. We're about 35,000 square feet. Um, so we've been you know we've been wanting to get an extra cleaner or custodian on staff for for a while. Um, so this would help bring us into that 30 30,000 dollars square, square foot ratio. Um, that we're that's kind of the, the the guideline or the recommended ratio that would certainly help help us um, and then by do by using by making the position a floater custodian and kind of splitting the shift uh -huh. we feel like we would save on, on overtime you know when there's not a full complement of staff what happens really is we're pulling from this building and bringing someone down to the elementary level to cover a sick call they may only have one day custodian at the three elementary schools. Um, and sometimes we try to avoid that on overtime hours whenever possible, but sometimes if there's more than one, one guy out a day, um, it does require some, some expansion of shift coverage and so forth and does hit the overtime budget. So this would help, wouldn't eliminate it, but it would reduce it. And we've done some analysis and looked at some days and, and what we could do and we, we feel like um, it would pay for about 50% of the, the salary right now. Yeah, I was just, uh, just um, going to point so that again, out. Small like, money to the engineer. and big gain. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we look at we look at yeah. that. Yeah. Small money, big gain, and then, you know, does, there are times when we're pulling from this building, uh, when, there's, when there's folks out or we don't have a full complement of staff, um, then it gets challenging to stay on top of everything in this building um, or this campus. You know, we, we're also maintaining that the team rooms and the, the bathroom facilities down down. Um, the fields now as well, so it, it gets a challenge. So having an extra person okay. with that flexible schedule um, would be a big benefit. Okay. I think, I think uh, Mr. Keller had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to just. You, uh, I got one here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The just I, the two operational items up there are those net of the anticipated savings, or are your other budgets? It's a great. That's a very good question. It. So it's the the first the first one, the custodian is. Is net. Yeah, I was going to say it's not, yeah, not going to so get something. It's really a forty-five thousand dollar yeah. position. Yeah. The second one, because it's on the other side of the equation, it's on the expense side. I've re actually reduced the contractual expense budget um, in, our, in our recommended budget, assuming that this position gets okay. funded by twenty thousand dollars. So if this were not to be funded, that has to subsequently increase okay. the expense side of it. So it's about a, you know, it's about twenty thousand dollar offset there. Okay. Thank you. This. Sixty-five thousand dollar net net impact. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. We look forward to hearing it again on the. <laughs> <laughs> right. What day was that? The workshop is the twenty-fourth. There three. we go. It takes me that many times just to get through my thick head. So <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. I'm, I'm 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 hoping that it's just that the community is listening to the webinars and mm -hmm. following everything online, which is yeah. why nobody nobody th hit, has the need to come and Except hear it at the public hearing. Right, public no, I appreciate hearing. that. I, I, the one oh. comment I did want to make is there's a lot of information out on the website. So if anyone you know, can't make it out to these meetings, I just encourage them to go to the, the budget link on the district administration website. All these presentations get, get uploaded. They're all there. There's, there's video links. The video to the webinar that occurred on March 28th which was more of the same of what we did tonight in, in a little bit, a little bit um, you know, in more detail in some areas. Yeah, you know, all, all the information is there. So, I how, are, how many views? <laughs> What's that? How many views? Um, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's got some hits. I'm under the hits. So. <laughs> yeah. I listened to the webinar. He did a great job. So.
Michael looks at it every day. Use of it. That's a separate computer, yeah. just yeah. running. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, I see that. Well, yeah. Next on the agenda is the high school um, trip for the Lord uh, the world languages, and I believe we have yeah. Miss uh, Felicia, Felicia here. Right over here. Yes, Felicia Linehan. Okay. Thank you, Don. Oh, please, okay. Thank you, Don. Oh, I can get Thank those you. Thank you. Are you coming tomorrow? Yeah. Are you coming tomorrow or not? Have, yeah. Or Wednesday? Thank you. Bye, Don. Thank you. 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 Felicia Linehan is a foreign language teacher at the high school, and she's one of the teachers that's proposing the trip for you. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we did this trip in 2014 and 2017, and it was very successful, so we'd like to do it again. We'd ideally like to do it um, at least once, if not twice, in the four years, every four years, because sometimes freshmen don't want to go, but then they want to go later, so we'd like to do it twice within the four years. Um, and it'd be for kids taking French only, so it's like in an effort to kind of build the French program. Um, that's why we started it. We've also been doing like, you know, field trips. We did MFA, French bakery uh, tour this fall. We're going to Les Mis in two weeks. Um, so we'd really like to get kids to be interested in it um, and maybe someday move to have an exchange, you know, with a French speaking country. But that's, for now, we're just doing this. So this would be um, a three day trip. So it's two nights, three days. Um, and the dates we have are November 14th to 16th. Um, we always kind of do it that Veterans Day week, and sometimes it works that you only miss one day of school, but this year, the way it falls, um, they will miss two days of school. Um, but that's, it's kind of a nice time uh, of year to go. It's decorated, it's quite lovely. There's no rain, it might be snow, but, um, and we've always done it then. Um, and so it's kind of a short trip, which is nice, because if kids have never traveled, it's not too long. Um, it's fairly affordable. It's going to be between 529 and 629. The price goes down, you know, the more kids that go. But that's like the range. Um, and it's, you know, it includes the transportation, the hotel, breakfast and dinners. Um, and it's really nice hotels and dinners. The kids are very impressed. You know, we like to do it nice. Um, and another good part is they actually don't need a passport. Um, so if kids don't have a passport, they can still go because if you're under 19 traveling by land with a school group or church group, you can go with a certified um, birth certificate. So that's kind of nice that they, you don't even need a passport and you can, you can still go. Um, and the company is now um, ACIS, which used to be Visit Canada, but they kind of merged. So it's the same company I've used since 2006. Um, and they kind of just merged into one recently. But it's still essentially the same trip we've always done. Um, and um, you have a kind of an itiner sample itinerary. Um, this is also the time that my preferred tour guide is available, which you have to book him two years in advance, which I did do, because the kids really enjoy him. Um, so you know, hopefully we'll be set to go. Uh, they can sign up at the end of this year, hopefully. And then the freshmen, the incoming freshmen in the fall, they'll still be able to do it, to sign up. <coughs> Um, that was one of my questions. Um, do you open it to incoming? Um, yeah, so it would be anyone enrolled in French for the next school year. And mm -hmm. that happens relatively quick for the eighth, eighth graders? Yeah. We, we, we're scheduling now. Okay. Yeah, so that's the, I mean, I could always have the French teacher down there present it to them. I was just yeah, going to say, I can, I can have do it that. presented to them. So it's kind of like, oh, if you go in, you can yeah. go to the trip mm -hmm. to. But we always take the last minute people in you know, September back to school. Not I usually mention it to parents and then, you know, because they'll pretty much, you can sign up pretty close to the. So it's not a deadline like June or something well, like Well, they give you a deadline, but they, you know, they know that mm -hmm. kids are always changing, changing their minds. They you sign up earlier, so. Yeah, um, right. Usually it's this. Uh, the same actually really price um because okay. it's just it's solely based on the number of students so the more students the yeah uh, like and it's like one shot one free chaperone for each 10 students and do you ever go over the 44 uh -huh. um have you in the past <laughs> not i we came close to it the first year but uh we've never 
no, it's never gotten, you know, that where we're like, I think they can take up to 50 on the bus or something like that. Hmm. Oh. We've gotten close, but not. My daughter was very lucky to be the incoming freshman to got to do it and then her junior year she got to do it again so oh, cool. she got the the two trips my son only got the one so he was a little <laughs> bit jealous they both enjoyed it thoroughly so with here's a silly question maybe but with quad occupancy does everybody get their own bed um, no, and we like tell them uh, because you know the tour companies, of course, wanna. And we uh, last time we stayed at the Chateau Frontenac, and we usually stay at pretty nice hotels. So they put four. Well, depending on the numbers, it's usually four to a room with two beds. Um, or if sometimes if there's three left over, two left over, then they, you know, those kids might get their own bed. But we tell them ahead of time, and I think that's typical of all the. I'm not sure about the Europe trips, but um, but I've never, you know. They pick their rooms, they pick their roommates. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've never, you know, had any. That's the way the DC trip is. For yeah. Floors. yeah. Yeah. I never had any complaints. <laughs> Although the picking of the room, the, that, was a, that was fraught, if I remember that's, correctly. That's a, that's a big deal with the Washington DC yeah. trip. Yeah. Yeah. Is it picking, yeah. Well, I let them pick, because, yeah. you know, I, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it all works out. <laughs> and they're very, I tell them, they're in the room you get back to the hotel each night at like 10 o'clock at night or later, so it's, you know, and then you're gone in the morning, so it's minimal you're time. Out, who showers in the morning, who showers at night, yeah. and you're not all clamoring, yeah. 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 Do they do the same kind of security thing as they do with Yeah, the they have, a, actually, they actually, this company provides an actual person that, um, at overnight security that stands outside the right. hall. Um, I usually tape the doors as well. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, um, but they actually have a person who does the security, which is kind of um, nice. And he was needed on the trip that I went on. Yeah. <laughs> just just want to say. Oh, boy. Why, what were you doing, Rich? I, 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 I cannot say. I have a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions or... Um, I'll accept a motion to approve the trip to Quebec. I will so move. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much for continuing to do this. Yeah, thanks. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All set? Yep. You're okay. all set. Thanks. Thank you. Nice job. All right. We're going to swoop back up to continue business and kind of put it in Wait, with Do we need to the close the public hearing, by the way? Oh, oh, that's yes, right. You did. Oh. I can tell you, Michael's presentation ended at like seven twenty. Seven oh five, his just, presentation. Just oh, began. That. So yeah. no, it, it ended at seven oh five. Yeah. Then, and it was the Q &A. But then he had questions. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question went to about seven twenty two. Yeah. I mean, Cindy will well. do. Cindy will do the minutes <coughs> electronically from a video. So as, I think if you, as long as you make that motion now, yeah. she I can know. record the time. Okay. I, I will move to close the public hearing on fiscal year 2020 budget. Second. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Someday somebody will have to explain to me the difference between the school committee meeting and the public hearing, but yeah. I doesn't have to do that now. <laughs> I did the same thing. We're like, what are you talking about? We got to do what? So, um, all right. So, swooping back into the agenda, we are going. Oh, well, we'll hold off on the continued business um, until after the trustees and trust funds. Um, all right. Trustees next first? Yeah, because I was going to keep the, the policies all together. That's fine. So, I'm trying to find where I am. Okay. Uh, all right, I am going to turn it over to Mr. Bernard. Um, if you would be sure. so kind as to um, explain what the documents are in. I'd be happy to, Madam Chairman, and I, and I have a recommended uh, course of action if, you, if you'd like to. Um, so this is probably only familiar to you, right? Because you were, you were, I think, the only person on the committee at the time that these last presented themselves. Yep. Um, so here. these are. Was this the found money that came up to me came one time? No. no, these these are these are trust accounts with the trustees at the town hall, and um, these are funds that are established um, typically by um, th through a, a last will and testament. Mm -hmm. And I actually have 
the documents here are very interesting. Um, just as a quick side note, here, you know, this is this handwritten. Edith, Edith Holtz, uh, 1936, 12th day of August. It's a handwritten, handwritten will. It's pretty fascinating. I, I remembered it from I remember a couple of years ago. It, yeah. So, um, in any case, um, what 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 has happened here is that the trustees of the trust accounts, uh, Dallas Kaufman and Gene Osborne, sent these communications to uh, to me to to share with you, and essentially what what the, the committee needs to do is decide on, uh, on an expenditure of the funds. So you, for the, the Edith Holt one is probably the, the simplest of the three because it's, it's traditionally a $250 scholarship award to a, a senior in high school, graduating senior. So I'm going to assume, and, and we can, you can certainly change your mind, but I'm going to assume we just go the normal course of action with that one. Um, do you want to give just a little bit of a background for the rest of the board? Sure. It's kind of like in her will that she said Correct. she would like. That she would earmark this, this amount of money as a scholarship for a graduating senior. And there's probably some specific language that is associated with that scholarship that when it gets advertised to the seniors, they, their application would, would subscribe to, that, to, that, um, to those qualifications. And then the committee makes the decision, the scholarship committee. The other two are a little bit more um, complicated. I mean, my, my recommendation to the committee was going to be, tonight was to just alert you to the fact that this money is available again. And, and what I did the last time, um, Janine, you might remember, is we, we kind of talked about some ideas at the administrative level and then I brought a recommendation into the committee in, in the form of a memo on how to expend the funds. The Walter Flint Fund, um, I don't remember what the amount was the last time, but it was quite a bit of money put, was put to the um, the field project, mm -hmm. right? And the, 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 without, I'm, I'm not quoting his, his will, but it essentially is um, uh, to be expended to the benefit of the children of North Reading. Is a, that might actually be what it says, it's but it's something pretty, pretty close like that. to that. It's just like whatever general purpose there is that the children of the town would benefit from. And so that project in the eyes of the committee fit, you know, that. So I can, you know, we can put our heads together and come up with a recommendation for, for the committee, to, your committee to commit, consider. The other one is, um, is similar. Um, but it is different in that it is only to be expended for, um, um, for at the Batchelder School, and it's and it's through um, essentially some sort of physical fitness activity, something for the health, the health and welfare of the children of that school. Um, so, for example, if if the Batchelder School has a a, a product that they want to buy for the gymnasium, for the physical education classes, that might be something that I would recommend to you. I can talk to Mr. Colleen and have him talk with Mrs. Weiss over at the, at the Batchelder School, but it's, it's for recreational equipment only, um, and it's just for the Batchelder School, whereas the, the Walter Flint one is a generic one for the town itself. I was here for that discussion. I might have been Were you? Sitting, I might have been sitting oh, okay. there, but I was, def I was here for, okay. for this. <laughs> so if you're okay with it, I'll put together you know, something I'll try and do that for the next meeting, but if not, it might be the, the, the second meeting in May with a recommendation for you all to consider on how you might want to expend the funds. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need to do anything tonight. It was just to alert, alert you that this money is out there again. Um, so, okay. I'll and do just, that. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, Michael. Yes. How, how does this go into, like, the budget? Does it have any effect on these? it? Yeah. I would, these would be gifts. No, yeah. They're gifts to the district. Okay. They're like a, you know, it's like a trust fund, but it doesn't, it doesn't impact anything with our budget. So it's not anything that you would like at the end of the year include? Well, if I, if I, if we have an expenditure from one of the funds, it would, as a, as a special revenue account, I would record it on like the end of the year financial report. I guess report it to the state as Mm -hmm. as a special revenue expenditure. Similar to like the, the gifts from the P yeah. yeah. and stuff. Correct, yeah. Okay. So that slide that Michael had with like mm -hmm. the two hundred and fifty thousand and the seventy five, it would it would, it would factor be, yeah, into it would those factor numbers. Into those areas. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just clarification yeah. period. Yeah, it's, yeah, good it's, good. Okay. it's good. All right, now we can get to the policies. <laughs> Everyone's favorite part. Yes. Uh, Miss Botwell and Mr uh, McGowan. Would you, Diana, like, would you like to uh, um, and we're catching the the uh, the first read. The continuing business. Yes, which would have been under continuing. Yep. For the recruitment, so of, the principals. recruitment of principals. Yes. Okay. So for policy CGCA recruitment of principals, um, this is for the second reading, and um, we discussed this the the last time and made some revisions to that, um, just right. cleaning up the language here, 
and making this flow a little bit better, but also to state that it truly is the superintendent who has this responsibility um, to really carry out um, this recruitment effort. So that's the major changes that you see here as in line with what was discussed back in March. All right, with that, I will take a motion to accept as the second reading. Uh, I will move that we accept as second reading policy CGCA recruitment of principals. Second. Perfect, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. motion carries, thank you. And then um, the next, the policy, which is under new business. Yes. So this is EDAA, the use of school vehicles. Um, when we met as the policy subcommittee, um, we discussed this third line item here where it states a request for the use of the school vehicle form must be completed, approved, and processed in the business office. Um, we didn't feel like that was an accurate depiction, if I'm um, remembering correctly, of how things are done, um, and reinstated this to say that the superintendent or his or her designee will develop and maintain procedures for the use and proper re record keeping of school-owned vehicles. Um, so a little bit more of a generic statement there that captures um, current state. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. okay. Only I can find two questions on this. But number one, does the school own all the vehicles do, or do we lease any of them? We do not, not lease. lease. Okay, we do not yeah, lease right. anything, so they're all owned. Right. That's a question. And then why is it? So most of the time it's superintendent, and in this one it's superintendent of schools. I'm just curious, is that your, is that the full title? or? It probably I don't captured know. from what we're, the existing We're going to put you on the committee policy. <laughs> back on the committee. It was policy. on there. <laughs> we should have put you back on. <laughs> on the committee with them. We're going <laughs> to put you back on, and your one focus will we be to. We had 99 to go. Will be to. Uh, last year, so. Can it make that language consistent. I think it just carried forward from number. Yeah, we two. didn't. Uh, no, I know. I just we didn't address that inconsistency. No. <laughs> All I may have say. <laughs> I can't. That's it. Thank you, Scott. That was extremely helpful. The lease was actually a real question. <laughs> well, if you did, I was. We're not changing it. Just policy of school owned schools vehicles on, in paragraph two uh, as well. School leased vehicles. It's a use of school vehicles, actually. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it the way it is. I think. Okay. Perfect. All right, with that, is there, uh, I would entertain a motion to accept as a revised first reading um, policy EDAA. Yes, I will move to accept as first reading policy EDAA use of school vehicles. Second. Any other questions or concerns? See, hearing none, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda. We can just skip over that, right? <laughs> I think so. The yeah. superintendent's evaluation um, assessment. Which? Me? I think I'm going to. Yes. Please. Present. Would so, you, so just would you do walk the you honors? Walk you through the packet. Okay. Yes, Thank please. you, Madam Chairman. So, I have for you a packet for my uh, my summative assessment, which is due at the end. This is now the end of the two-year cycle, or we're coming up on the end of a two-year cycle of my educator evaluation. So, what I what I gave to you in your packet is um, kind of a cover letter with um, some attachments. And the attachments include um, my self-assessment. So essentially, and, and I, I, I probably should have said this a minute ago, but much like we do with, with all of our other educators in the district, I'm, I try to follow suit with, with what we are, our expectations are for everybody else in the district. So a self-assessment is a part of that, part of that process. So I've, I've put together for you a, a, a self-assessment, and that's kind of the first pack, uh, piece in the packet. That's about the seven, six or seven pages or so. And that's for you to consider um, as, you, as you work toward um, evaluating me on my having met my goals in the two-year cycle. The next document is the form to be used. I emailed all of this to all of you this morning if you wanted to use it electronically. Um, so that's, that's the tool to be used. Um, Next is a, some, some information that I thought might be helpful um, for you from the Department of Education on the evaluation of the superintendent. Just an informational packet. Next is a copy of um, the 
formative assessment that the school committee uh, did on my performance last April. So I gave that to you just to see what the feedback was at that time, particularly for Mrs. Bowell and Mr. McGowan, who would not have been part of that process. It just gives you a little insight into what, what the committee thought at that time. Um, and then to remind Mr. Buckley and, and Ms. Imbriano, you know, what kind of just cap, you, know, you don't have to go looking for it, it's right here for you. Mm -hmm. The next document is, um, is um, my progress report that I issued to you at the time you were doing my formative assessment. And I think what, what's of most importance here is I think in this document, the thing that has changed is the green column. So the green column is a progress report. So I've, I've updated, that looked different last April. I've updated it now with more information as to where I think things stand on, and some evidence that you can apply to the evaluation. And that's, there, there should be, um, there's a professional practice goal, a student learning goal, and then I had six um, district improvement goals. And they're all, they're all kind of highlighted in the yellow band um, on each of the pages. The last thing, and what I have done traditionally is I make available, so I have a portfolio here, but I, I only have the one. So I, I make this available in my office for you to come by and look at, right? That's what we've done traditionally. So mm -hmm. if, at, at any time you want to come by the office and let my administrative assistant knows where it is, it's on the round table in my office. You, I don't have to be there. You can, you can grab it and go through it and, and look at some of the things that, that, um, that I have in here that will help you to kind of gauge how well I've done with meeting my goals. In, in all candor, it's really, you probably have most of this, you've probably gotten most of this at school committee meetings. Um, a lot of them are, are the reports that, um, that I give to you either as part of your packet or in my supplemental reports, but I've highlighted what, what I think applies to any of my goals and I've identified what the goal is. So it, it's, it's, a lot of it's gonna look similar. It's just I've organized it into one location for you and that's, that's traditionally what I've done and I think that's I've never heard that that hasn't worked well for the committee, so. Has anyone other than Mel come and actually yes. review it? Yes. yes. I was gonna say, can we have a report uh, at the end of the process to, uh, of who actually came and looked at it? I can, I, can, I can tell you that other members have come, more than just Mel, yep. I actually take it home for the week. I, it's, it has been, yeah. I didn't want to embarrass you, but. No, that's <laughs> fine, well, because I. And I it is more than Janine. I, I, I gather all of the evaluations. Um, in the past when I have done it. Yeah. Um, and that book has um, not dwindled in size, but has been reduced, thankfully, <laughs> in size. Um, when I first, first did it with Kathy, yeah. I think I, I must have like had a table this big. Well, but that's, that's a goal of the whole, the st when the, the state the revamped, whole, revamped yes, the system, it yes. was no longer like they would use the, when we would go to presentations on the new education evalu evaluation system, they would actually have a graphic of a wheelbarrow. Yep. And that was like the joke with the Department of Education that no longer is the wheelbarrow like a part of this. Right, it, it's um, supposed to be uh, tree friendly. And because, and because the system is so much more condensed than it was, it used to be a four year system for our district, professional growth plan. Four yeah. Right, years so, of exactly. So now, the, you know, part of it is to be streamlined. And so, and, even, and I would say to you that this is probably, would you say that this is typical of what you guys submit to me? Pretty much. Um, As a binder, maybe a little thicker than, little, you know, but not. A little bit thicker, but yeah, yeah. it's really typical. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's you not know, teacher <laughs> binders yeah. and such might There's be. There's a lot might, of information in there. Yeah. 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 Yard. So and you can take it you, if you if you decide you want to take it home. Just you know maybe not too long because somebody else might come in after it. I'll but, probably you know. come in on Friday. To I'll try to remind. I'll try to send something if someone takes it. I'll try to remind the other three of you that it's gone. So don't come that day. But um, you have a few weeks to do that. So um, I so feel like the, that that there, uh, there's an opportunity there. Just looking forward that. Seeing what that book looks like right now and what, what we hope it will look like two years or two and a half years from now, yeah. so it probably makes sense for all of us to take a look at it. I keep my own binder on Mr. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> Funny because I keep one on you. <laughs> <laughs> How was that, Joe? Huh? We must consult the same lawyer. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's it's there. It's it'll it'll be there tonight. As soon as you want it, as soon as you want it, you can you can take it. So. And then uh, just a reminder, so the timeline on that, so you, you um, is um, April 29th is, is the forms to be completed and sent to Mr. McGowan and, and Ms. Imbriano. 
I are believe you, I, you're, I'm you're on accumulating the hook for this one? Yeah. all. Yeah. yeah, you get the. So you're doing school committee. Got, I got this one. Okay. We're emailing to you, Janine. Mine. Yes. Okay. And again, if we do it electronically, you want us to save it as a PDF. It comes through easier yes, that way. Please. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the formatting is better. Yeah, too, it, it, yeah. It, you, sometimes it gets skewed, um, yeah. at least from my computer, because I think some people have PCs and I have Apple. So yeah. if I don't save it as a PDF, it that gets all yeah humbled yeah. and jumbled. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. What a process. Um, on to routine <clears throat> matters. We have minutes to approve for the uh, February 11th open session. If you've all had a time to look over it, I will entertain a motion to accept. I move to accept the February 11th, 2019 open session minutes. Second. All right. Um, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me that needs to be updated or changed. So with that, I'll um, all in favor of acceptance. Aye. 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 Thank you. Four to zero. Unfortunately, it's not on the side. All right. Um, and we've already had the budget update, so there's none on that time. Staffing, Mr. Bernard? No, nothing tonight, Madam Chair. Nothing Bernard. to say no. on well, staffing? Well, shouldn't we, shouldn't we maybe mention staffing? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I never even thought that that would be part of that report. That's where I was going <laughs> I think we should say something. Mr. Buckley. Oh, I will say something. So... As most people have heard, and, and my understanding is it was not submitted to Ms. Simbirana because she didn't get it, so it hasn't been accepted. But it's, it's not, it's not, a, <laughs> it's not a thing yet. <laughs> um, no, you, you've indicated and given us plenty of notice that you will be retiring at the end of the year on January 1st, and so I'm sure there will be a lot of time to dedicate to our appreciation for you and what you have done. But I will just say personally, I'm. Fairly shocked and very saddened by it, but you know, happy for you as a person. Happy for you that Thank you. You know, you're in good health and yes. you know we'll get to enjoy that. You've served North North Reading in you know a couple of roles here already. You've served the uh, public education system for even more years than that, and you know, personally, you've been a very good resource for me. I think you know I appreciate all of that. It will be you know we have we have a fairly inexperienced school committee i think it's very obvious here um, with only one member not in his or her first term but i will say we have a very dedicated staff here and we have a lot of people that have put in the time to mm -hmm. you know to learn and do the right things and i think a lot of us have reached out to other people that have been here before us to learn from them as well and so i'll just say hiring a superintendent is one of if not most likely the most important job that we have no question and i think that we you know i think i will just say publicly that i i know i will and i assume that everybody here we will put in the time to you know do it the right right way um we will not be able to replace mr bernard but that's not the objective the objective is to find another great superintendent i think i i knew you know kathy willis a little bit and I thought she was a very impressive person, and I think you've been Indeed. just as impressive, but in a different way. And so I think that's the marching orders that we have, is to put the time in to you know, do it the right way. And you know, I think we're, it's not, not what I was hoping for for the rest of this year, but it's you know, going to be time consuming, but I think we you know, will miss you, and I will tell you that many other times, but just wanted to at least acknowledge it since you, you did send the email to everybody. No, and I would just add, I'm sorry, no, go ahead. I would just add that, uh, and to sort of restate a little bit, um, I think the committee really appreciates, certainly I really appreciate the, uh, the amount of time you've given us. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to give that much notice ahead of something like that, but um, uh, I mean, that's a, it's, it's a real gift, I think, for us to, to be able to undertake a process that is thoughtful and uh, mm -hmm. um, isn't rushed, so uh, that's... I certainly really appreciate that. I'm starting to think that Rich and I drove you out of here. No, no, no. Those policy committee meetings, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Is I, I, that what it is? <laughs> I, I already called Jerry and said, add John to the list. <laughs> I, I, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to say, I am, my decision to retire is for all of the right reasons, and I feel very blessed to be able to say that. It's, it just seems like the right time. 
and that's the only reason. So, um, so please don't take it personally. <laughs> and I'm still going to be I'm here for quite a while, but I, I know you we are. We have a lot of time yeah. to be depressed. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been, it's been wonderful, more than I ever could have asked for my whole career. I'm, I just I consider myself a very, very lucky man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Scott and I have people knocking on the door for the roast. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to be great. <laughs> Just let me, let me guess. <laughs> I, I can guess one. <laughs> no. But there's a, lot, there's a lot of work to do still. Yep. Um, the chairman and I spoke today, and I've given her some information that I, I'm hoping will be useful as the committee thinks about next steps. But I certainly will make myself available and, um, to assist in that process. Um, you know, if there's anything on the, on the informational end, the clerical end, you know, those, all that kind of stuff that goes along with yes. this process, I, I, I will assist you as much as you want, so. Thank you. Or as little Very as you gracious. want, you know, if you. Oh. Help is always good, I think. Yep. All right, now, since how there was no staffing, on to the next for <laughs> bids and donations. <laughs> I'm Rich. Looks like we have a few. Going. Yes, we do. Madam Chairman, I recommend that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $300 from the Arbella Insurance Foundation to support transportation costs for Ms. Kristen Dye's class field trip to a 2019 Boston Symphony Orchestra Youth Concert. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I thought you were going to say Christian Dye <laughs> from Phantom of the Offer. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was going to say what? Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a bit of a geek above my head. to that. Yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little bit above my head. I, I got it eventually. Okay. <laughs> I move that the uh, school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $300 from the Arbella Insurance Foundation to support transportation costs for Ms. Jana Como's class field trip to a 2019 Boston Symphony Orchestra Youth Concert. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude $700 from the North Reading High, High School Hornet Hall of Fame Association to be used by each elementary school to purchase new fitness equipment as noted above, $200 for the bachelor school, $200 for hood, $300 for the little school. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Buckley, you didn't want to add anything? about the little school, about yeah. winning the turkey uh -huh. trot again. Again. No, I, I don't have to mention that the little school wins the turkey trot every year. <laughs> every year. Yeah. At, least, okay. at least you don't have to mention it more than once no. a year. We, we don't have to mention that the little school wins it every year. <laughs> okay. oh, it's, it's quite a bone of contention at <laughs> the administrative council meetings, really. <laughs> I can imagine. They, they're, they're a uh, competitive well, group. The only, the only thing I would note there is, though, like, for the healthy kids running, I know there was a lot of people in this district that went to, I mean, my kids were there yesterday. It's not really, it's run by Parks and Rec, but it was well represented by the school. I mean, mm -hmm. Mr. Connolly was there, Dr. Yeah. Daly was there with they his kids. And this morning, it was yeah. great to hear, yeah. Mr. Quinlan, the, yeah, you know, the teacher at the Hood School, the gym teacher at the Hood School ran it, and there was more than 400 kids wow. that ran. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's awesome. two-year-olds through eighth grade, but in, in truth, fourth through eighth grade only had about 32 students. There was about 370 between two-year-olds and third grade. <laughs> that's it awesome. It was literal chaos <laughs> but it was a beautiful day well you know. they call it herding cats yeah, yes exactly. yeah. Yeah. yes he had, michael had video it was fun to watch i yeah, was there was i was yeah. helping organize some of oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot fun. of kids it's it was great a good time thank you uh i move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of 766 dollars and 50 cents from the middle school parents association to put toward the middle school speaker for you don't know me until you know me Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That sounds really interesting. The you don't know me till you know it does. me. does. Just by the title it does. Yes. yes. Yeah. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a to total donation of $875 from the middle school parents listed above to offset the costs associated with the eighth grade Washington DC trip. If anyone would like, I'd be happy to read the list of names since we are almost done. It's not too late. Yeah. I think we should, shouldn't we? Yeah. That was, I mean, they, they took the time to do what they're doing. I think they... So Paul and Melissa Grew, Arthur Lee and Ty Tan, Raymond and Kimberly Colad 
uh, Kolodziejak. That's probably not correct. I apologize. I should have looked first before I offered to read. <laughs> Rosalie Whalen, Kevin and Sophia Cabral, Robert and Gina Tomorrow, Garabet Toby and Nisreen Bahnan, Anne and Scott Newton, Samantha and Matthew Meyer, Scott Hampoyan, Damon and Pamela Long, James and Holland Nickerson, Stephanie and Terence Tully, Janet and Javier Flores, Siobhan Fitzgerald and Larry Arden, Cynthia and Paul DaCosta, Kristen and William Chase, Sabina and Scott Sawyer, Jennifer and John Pagliuca. Thank you all. Very nice. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You know, it is, we say this every time, but it is oh, so it's wonderful. Phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. They, it's, you know. I know. And every meeting. Yes, every meeting. I don't think there's been a meeting that has gone by I, in the past two, if not three years, I, that I there think wasn't. You're probably a right. Yeah, so. I agree. And this that, that last one was uh, caused special to my heart too. The, the helping the uh, yeah helping other kids uh, yeah, go to the uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. DC Great. Trip. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Um, Subcommittee updates. The policy subcommittee um, was held on March 27th. Would you two would like to give an update on, as to what happened? Section F. 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 The very short section F. We breezed through it. I don't believe we came up with any other. I guess we would have seen them if we had. Yeah. Um, you completed. Se section F was thin, but yeah. they got through it in We're one meeting. More efficient and effective. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're nearing the end of your policy unless you guys re-up again. Well, and we'll see how that plays out, but there's a lot of manual to go through still, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be nice to continue, yeah, if you're up for it, but there is still a lot more to go. We do G love Section policy. G is a. We do love policies. Actually, I thought it was fun. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't no. mind it at all, and, and it's yeah, certainly, I, yeah. I, I will say, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll see how it plays out, but uh, I'm, I'm certainly willing to do, do it, continue <laughs> on. <laughs> It's amazing how a year goes by, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, it is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably they're, you're more efficient this year than last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think the I think the MASC update was the thing that made it. That was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot That's more. Right. You know, right now it's reviewing your existing. We're really just cleaning. So, yeah. Looking for those things that clean up. Good word. Yeah. Cleaning yeah. up the language. Yeah, that was that was a big task last year. Superintendent of schools. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the, uh, the second half of the year next year, the policy subcommittee will, will be the information flow will be in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> um, the finance planning team met several times over the last couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Span of about four days. Yeah, yeah. it was about four, five four or time, six meetings. Four times in three days, and <laughs> and Janine and I went to the select board meeting for three hours as well. Yeah, it was interesting to say the least. Um, but you know, coming close to budget time, it's it's always uh, you know hustle and bustle. I believe uh, Mr. Conley kind of spoke to where we are, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, on the revenue side. So I don't really <clears throat> see that there's anything much more to discuss until. Pretty much, we have our next meeting and that, the that final the numbers come out. The focus of those meetings was the revenue. So. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I will say is that we are, we have said we are going to try to operate as one town as the best we can. We've tried to work through formulas, and I think, I, I hope people see that the schools are really trying to do that as well because the municipal side's in a tough situation as well this year, and so mm -hmm. we have done our best to try to be good partners with the municipal side and. No, there's been, yeah, I think they recognize yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, again, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, when when budgets don't go up, go up enough, when the, you know, new revenue is not as high as we'd like it to be, when the state doesn't give the funding that it should for school for schools, it's hard. You know, and and when you look through where the funding comes from, <clears throat> not just local taxes but local receipts, and then fees that we're charging. I mean, we're still amongst the highest fees for, you know, for for a full day kindergarten in the state and. You know, it all comes from this community, and the community is very generous. But we're trying to work with them, and it's it's tough every year. And so we want to, you know, fund NRPS 2021, and you know, then 2026. But it's it's hard. And so I mean, I think you know, there was there's some, some tough meetings at times, but I think we're all working together and of course. the right way. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's good. <clears throat> all right. Excellent. 
Thank you. Um, upcoming uh, subcommittee schedule, the Substance Abuse Co uh, Coalition meets tomorrow, right, today? Yes, that would be tomorrow. Yes. Yep. Tomorrow at, um, I actually have 10 o'clock. Oh, that's what the, okay. Um, at 1045 at the police station, um, the athletic subcommittee meets tomorrow as well at 1230 in the superintendent's conference room. The financing planning team meets again um, on April 10th at 130 in the superintendent's conference room. The CIPC uh, meets April 10th as well at four o'clock at room five in the town hall. NORCAM meets at um, uh, April 25th at 7 p.m. in the NORCAM office. And the policy subcommittee meets again on May 2nd at 4 p.m. at the superintendent's conference room. And with that, uh, Mr. Bernard, would you like to give the administrative report? I would, Madam Chairman. If you don't mind, on the, on the schedule of subcommittee meetings, I didn't forget, but I didn't list the evaluation subcommittee. We had, you had, had that as a placeholder mm -hmm. for April 11th in case right, you yeah. wanted to come together to hunker down and do the work in the conference room. If you don't, I that's fine. If you do. I would say n no, I, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think we're fine. I, I, I just wanted to remind that, yep. that the, the space is available if you, okay. Did you if want I, to if we need the to, master plan new I can always call that you. was formed that I'm part of? Yeah. Would you like, I'm happy to. You don't have to. I just didn't know if you wanted me to report when those meetings are moving forward. Do you want to do it in the, in the same way of like the school star times advisory? When you feel there's something to report, yep. you can just add yeah. that in yeah. okay because that's starting this week so I can great keep oh good okay oh, I'm sorry what was what was it the master plan um, mm. committee so so give like a, a, an update to the committee on an sure, as, as it when you have something that. okay if you're comfortable with that great yeah. okay and madam chairman I did leave at each of your seats just a little just the one uh, one item I wanted to, um, to speak about and that was power University on Saturday um, I, I cannot be more pleased with um, with how the day went, I thank the committee for its support too. Um, you, you you had that as you had Parent University supporting Parent University as one of your goals um, this year too, and I appreciate that. But it was a really nice day. Um, you know, as I indicated here, we had uh, we had 42 volunteers that were here either to either to present workshops or to otherwise facilitate the day. So you know, people like. Mr. Maloney, who the assistant principal of the middle school, was a huge help. Mr. Hain, they didn't necessarily present workshops, but they were key to, to the success of the day, and there were others like that. But, um, and not just school people. We had, we had community people here, too, from the public library, from the police department, from the uh, Drug Free Communities Grant, Amy Luckowitz, um, and then a lot of school folks as well. And I think, I'm estimating we had about 70 people in attendance, and I just thought it was a really, a really nice day um, for our second time doing that. Um, the feedback has been very nice, very positive. People leaving that day, speaking to me personally. I got some emails. Um, and it's really interesting at the, um, the, re the reaction of the people that, that you know, so-called worked it, that volunteered it, too. Just really, there was some, some friendships made across grade levels, people working with people in other schools that they didn't really know before Parent University. It was really nice to see. So um, it was a good day. I think it was a feel-good day for the district, a feel-good day for the town. I think the more we open up this campus and open up our schools to, to the community in a positive way, you know, the more that I think we're kind of building the capacity to get the support that we need from the community. And I think... I think it's another example where that, that was the case. I do want to just acknowledge the sponsors of the event and just a reminder to all of you and the community that we do Parent University without any taxpayer money, with no money from the operating budget. It's all through donation. Um, and the, the people that contributed um, this year were, actually it's, it's um, all of the same people um, with the exception of the community impact team, which was a sizable contributor as well. But Jeff Simons of Amer Ameriprise Financial, Chartwell's Dining Services, which is the, um, the food services company that provides um, food for our, for our students um, at lunchtime and in the breakfast program. Um, as I said, the community impact team, um, Mr. Tony Mafio, who happens to be a North Reading resident and owner of a company, Integrated Benefits Group. The Reading Cooperative Bank and Mr. Michael Walborn, again, a very generous partner with the school department, contributes. Um, Reading Cooperative Bank is very generous in a number of other ways, too. And lastly is Mr. Steve Tardanico of um, Reimbursement Specialists, Inc. is the name of his company. So, again, I'm very, very grateful to their, to their continued support of Parent University, and I think it was a, a, a good day. So <coughs> that's all I have, Madam Chairman. Do, do you have a sense of the 
how the different ages were represented by the attendees, by the 70 people who attended? Is it? You know, we do, but I don't have that in, in my head, but we do it as part of the, the sign up. Sure. Um, but I would have that data, yeah. I haven't looked at anything. I haven't done yeah. I haven't really looked at anything since Saturday, but about the day, but um, um, I, I wouldn't even be able to guess yeah. for you to say, like, the people there, because some parents have kids at different levels, course, too, so yeah. I don't think I can give you really an educated <laughs> answer, but we do have that information, yeah. I stopped by briefly in the morning, uh, just you. on my way to, to uh, uh, a, a meeting, uh, put on my MAS, the MASC on uh, school start times. But um, and there was a lot of energy in the air. I could say that, yeah. and uh, uh, a lot of interesting things going on. So it was yeah, good. it was neat. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Also, Thank you. I stopped by. I think it was a great, great presentation. I mean, from what I yeah, saw, like fun. just just even even just the groups that were presenting um, mm -hmm. out in the. In Main Street. Um, the information for I also had a event. very important meeting I had to get to instead, but. Um, <laughs> yes, you said. You did, did say that. A charitable event I was going to, actually. You say that with the street. So, the Information um, Pavilion is kind of a neat thing. I mean, yeah. that's, that was Mike Maloney's idea last year when we started that. He and Kim Smith, the librarian at the high school, they're the two that, that have kind of spearheaded <laughs> that for two years now. And it is a, just to get those quick hits on information of things that are going on in the town. And it was, it, I, I thought that had more energy this year than last year. Mm -hmm. Why, I don't know. There were some different presentations, but they were some, a lot of them were the same as last year, but it just, there were a little bit more, there were a little bit more um, presentations on the information pavilion. But yeah, people read the, the robotics, you know, that was an interesting yeah, thing to see. The kids were great, you know. The chorus, chorus was there. Yeah, the that was new. The yeah, Queen, the Queen Listed, tribute They did a couple there. of songs that they had performed at the All Town Chorus. That was neat. Yeah, that was really nice. That was a nice touch. That was different this year, but. And I heard Mr. Bernard said he wants to keep doing this even from retirement, I thought. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Well, that kind of parlays into me. Um, where did the idea come from to have a parent university if you don't? Mind. No, I don't mind. In fact, I said it in my little opening in the Performing Arts Center. It's not, it is not, it was not my idea. It was, I, I, I stole it from other communities that I know have, um, have similar events. Reading and Burlington were the two, uh, excuse me, Reading, Burlington, and Wakefield. Um, but, and I can tell you that I have been contacted since by one other school district that, you know, can you share with me what you do? And I did, and they're, they're doing one now. And that's, that's how it happened. I just, I saw it, I think I originally saw it as like a, a Burlington Public Schools tweet. And I, I kind of looked into it a little bit more and found that Wakefield was doing one and I reached out to that superintendent at the time. And she's, she's now retired, Kim Smith. Um, and she shared a lot of information that she had about their day. And we just kind of, you know, tweaked that to, to be a North Reading specific one. But where the concept first originated, I don't know, but it, it, it's something that's going on. I think Reading just had theirs. Do you know they did. It was like the, maybe last, the week the before week us? Before. Yeah, it was, it was March 30th. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's it. Was just an idea that you know, I I, I saw somewhere and just kind of reached out and yeah. Um, do you have a how to run the parent university step by step guide for? I will tell know, you, it was much easier forward? this year. The first year was a lot more work. Um, it just because you really don't know, you know, you, you're starting from scratch, really. But yeah, there's a pretty there's a, a very detailed blueprint. Yeah, of, of, of everything that we have. We've talked in the office about these kind of theme days. You know, we really liked the STEAM night that we did earlier yeah. this year. Yeah. yeah. We've talked about doing like a digital learning event. And I think nothing's in firm, but you know, it's mostly mostly conversation with, with, with Patrick Daly and, and, and with Michael um, and Cynthia Cohen, and, you know, the kind of the central office team. Um, that I, I think, you know, I don't know if there's a place for maybe, like each year is a different theme type of thing, and, or do you do something every other, I don't know, those are the kinds of things, but every year has like a, a, focus, a focus event too. Like we really liked the STEAM night, and I think the community liked that, yes. you know, and I think I'd like to look, I, I think looking forward, maybe like a digital learning event could be, I mean, we're doing so much in digital learning, and I think to bring K to 12 together and showcase that would be, would be valuable, so I wouldn't be surprised if something like that were were to be a focus next, you know, in the next in the 1920 school year. Um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to add my little two cents worth. I did um, attend both years last year and yeah. this year, um, and say thank you to Dirt Wells because the food was delicious. They, they did a nice right. job. Yes, yes they, they did. They, they did a wonderful nice job. job. Yeah. Um, I thought it was great that there's not only teachers but students. Um, Mm -hmm. participating mm -hmm. yep. in it. Michael Tyrell, Tyrell was um, 
such a wealth of information. It's phenomenal. He's yeah. <laughs> Um, and it was nice to see the administration walking around, poking their heads in, you know, listening a little bit and, and, and going on. Yeah. And I just wanted to mention that Mr. Hain, is that how you pronounce his last yes, name? Um, he had come to Michael's presentation and he was able to answer a couple of questions that the parents had. And I thought that was reassuring, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you know, to be visible one and, you know, to be able to yeah. just talk on the spot. And he had been at the junior prom the night before, too. So he had a, <laughs> he had a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he, you know, he talked about that, or, you know, we were having a chit-chat in the hallway, and um, he was uh, very, uh, what's the word, I'm proud, I'll, I'll use proud, uh, of the students. He said a lot of the students went out of their way to come and say thank you um, for a wonderful evening. Yeah, he told me the same thing. Yeah, yeah. so he was, he thought. Yeah, you know, we talked about it. Students I, I told him where my tradition when when I was principal where the where my traditional spot was at the end of the night at the Hillview. Yeah, there, there's those leather chairs in the foyer. Yeah, and that's where I would sit. And the kids when they left that that it was, yeah, they they'd come, come over by, and thank you. Your yeah, it was great. And it yeah. was yeah, and then they he was very away. impressed. With yeah, that. so when he was telling me, I was I told him what I just told you that you know that's that's how they are. They're they're great. And they had a good time and. It was nice to hear that was his first observation yeah. of them at a prom. So yeah. you know, we were new, and, and uh, it was nice to hear what he said. All right, thank, um, thank you for it. mentioning that. You're welcome. Okay, uh, let's see. Future business. We have a meeting, uh, the budget workshop in the superintendent's conference room on Wednesday, April twenty fourth at three p.m., and then a regular <laughs> meeting here in the distance learning lab, April twenty ninth at six thirty p.m., and then our next meeting or at least possibly <laughs> my next meeting after that would be um, May 13th at 6.30, but this one will be held at the Little School. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. And all in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Have a good evening.